I'm Bill. I'm Kelly. And this is our This adventure. is our adventures. Oh. Here we go. my custom built table oh wait you may want to know how I did this let's just back up so this is probably where you'd want to start back at the beginning let's get started and show you how I did this project before I get started I need to get this old table out of the way so let's unscrew it I'm gonna put this over here for right now because I don't have anybody to hear it, help me carry it out. It'd be a little heavy. I probably need to unload those first. Because I'm gonna re, I just redid these curtains, but I think I'm gonna do something different. I saw somebody else had done some uh, taking this down and putting up some pretty wood and I want to do like some linen curtains but I'm probably going to take these off of this window for right now and I'm going to do my new table because I don't think I want the curtains here they're kind of useless and I just want this open Now that I have this open, and I'm so excited because this is going to make this so much bigger, I'm going to do a 20 inch deep table that's going to run from that wall to here. So it's going to be 20 inches across. Then I'm going to have it drop down a little bit and I'm going to have another shelf because I work on my computer a lot here. So I will be able to put my computer up under that little shelf that's going to be up underneath here. Maybe some little baskets or something would be fit in there. You could put pens. This is going to be a lot extra storage and room. Also, because of the chairs, they don't have, I mean, they have cup holders, but coffee cups don't fit in that really good. It just doesn't have an end table on this side. So what we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a table that matches this here. And it's going to be the bench height. So it'll be here, and then you can put your cup on it. But if you need a bench, we'll be able to take it and turn it and move it around if we needed more seating. That's my plan. But as you know, if, if you RV at all, plans are to be broken. So I have a plan, but I'm gonna may have to alter it part way through, but we'll just see how it goes. But the good thing is, is once I get this done, you'll know what problems I had or what I had to alter my plan and maybe it'll help you with your project. So, let's go start cutting wood. So, here is my plan that I have drawn out, like what I want it to look like from the end, from the front and from the top. And it's got all my measurements on it. Uh, I took the top, out to the camper and it fits perfect so I don't need to cut it and all my dimensions should be correct now I'm going to go ahead and cut and start with my sides I'm not going to show you cutting them out but I will once I'm done I will make sure I measure and I can put better <laughs> diagrams on them these are diagrams that I can understand <laughs> probably not the normal person but I know what I wanted so once I cut everything out, I will put it together and then we will stain it and do the treatment that I think I want to do on it and then I'll put it in the fifth wheel. But I'm going to start, I'm going to go ahead and cut all my pieces out 
and then bring them in and show you me putting them together. To keep from splitting your wood, I bought a drill and driver. What it is, it is a, that goes on your drill and it countersinks the screw heads and it drills a pilot hole so that it doesn't uh, splinter your wood. Also, what is cool about this is once you countersink, so you don't have to keep changing out your bit, you let it go. Oh, wait, sorry. Pop it up, it comes out. You flip it over, pop it back together, and there is your number two bit. Ready to go. Cool. This is gonna be my top, so I want this two by four to be flush with the top so that my top can sit on it and we can attach the top and it'll give support. Mine in from the ends. You'll see the screws, but that'll add to the characteristics of it, I think. So, we've got to line this up. Go ahead and so it sinks it. Let go of it. Flip it around. And it sinks in. Now, I'm just going to attach all those the same way. Also, I'm going to do one on each side, but I'm going to go ahead and do this side first and then come back and do the other side. So I have all the screws in the one side. I'm going to flip it over level everything and put the screws in the other side. So my boxes are together on some of my measurements. This is going to be a little smaller than I wanted, but it's still going to work for my computer because that's what I wanted it for. So now I got to do the hard part, the part that I don't understand. My husband, he built me a desk and I'll insert a picture of what it looked like for my office. but. I want to do crosses here. He did two befores on mine, and I liked it, but I wanted this to have more air, like more air, more air. I wanted more air. I wanted to have more area. So like okay, a two befores made it really narrow. I mean, like you couldn't see through it. So I've opted to do two by twos. I'm gonna cut my first two by two longer than what I need, and I'm gonna mark it. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to work, but I don't know how to do the crosses, so this is how I, in my mind, am going to do them. What's probably going to happen is my husband's going to have to get home tonight and make my crosses for me. But until then, I'm going to go try to make me some crosses. So here is in my mind how I think I'm going to make this work. Oh, let's see if I can get you to see this. I'm gonna take my two by two that I cut, and I cut it 30 inches long, which I don't need that length. <coughs> but I cut it that long so that I can. And then what I'm gonna do is in the middle of my two by two, which is an inch and a half, which is only gonna be three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna make a little line. And I'm gonna sand all this off later, so. So we're gonna make a little line. That way I know the middle. Be a couple of scrap two by two, two by fours that I had out there to help hold this up. And then I'm gonna slide this in and I'm gonna put my lines that I made in my corners. And I'm gonna take my pen and make sure that those lines, that's my center of my two by two. I'm gonna put and mark. I'm gonna mark it on this one. And I'm gonna mark it on this one. Now, see where I marked them? I'm gonna go cut on my marks and see if it fits. <laughs> Look, I cut it 
and it fit the center of my two before. A two before is only three and a half inches wide and half of that is one and three quarters. One side done, then I'm gonna do the other the same way. Put my two befores back up under. Slide this up under there. Oop. Mark the middle of my... and cut those ends then slide it in and then mark where I need to cut the center off and then that way they'll attach. So now that I slid that in there and those pieces look really good and snug I'm just gonna mark there mark it there and then I'll just cut that piece in half and then it should slide right in. Now that I have my pieces cut I'm going to uh, screw them in. It's probably going to be easier to nail than it is to screw, I think. I'm going to try nailing it. Let's <laughs> see. Yeah, much better. Don't look at all that over there. <laughs> That's from when the camper was at the... Uh, that's everything out of the camper from when it was at the shop. We had to take everything out, so sorry. Got the legs done. I still gotta cut this board because it's gotta be flush. But I uh, just added these two befores this way between the two legs, and now I'm gonna add a two before on the back side just to keep the legs and make it a little more sturdy. I also, and I'll link it below, I got this cool thing up that I'm putting in the top because I don't want the cords running around. I thought like I had something on me. This is a tabletop plug. I'll drill a three inch hole in the counter top over here and then I'll screw this on and it's got two USBs and two plugs, and then I will just run it back there and plug it in. And that's what I was looking at with the way that I bid these boards, but it'll end up going like right in here. And I think it'll work perfect. <sighs> I don't know what day I'm gonna be able to get to finish it, but at least it's coming together. I'm so excited. My vision is coming together. And let's turn the lights on. Hello. I've changed clothes because it's three days later than when I started the video. Today I'm going to try to uh, get this stained. I kind of have an idea of what I want it to stain so that it'll match the rest. But I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to start mixing a gray and a walnut stain and see how that comes out but first I got to get a tarp down 
let me go get my stain and then I'm gonna stain everything and then I'm gonna attach the top I'm gonna drill the hole for my power I'm gonna mix two stains special walnut and classic gray because I have kind of gray brown looking colors in here it's not really gray and they're not really brown I want to match so I have two different foam brushes one for the gray and one for the brown because I don't want to mix them so I'm gonna take the gray and rub it on it Now we're gonna take the brown stain and go back in and go over that. And then take my rag and wipe it off. And that is the color I want. Perfect. Now I gotta stain the whole thing. Originally, I thought that I was going to uh, paint the bottom, but this stain is turning out it is matching the floor perfect. So I'm gonna keep doing this and then we'll see how it looks. What I just slid in is this little shelf that's going to be right here. It's really small and it's like, oh, why aren't she doing that? My computer, I measured it and it will slide in here. So when I'm not using my computer, I can put it away up under here and it's not sitting on top. That was my idea anyway. And also, I have decided I'm not going to paint the bottom. I'm just going to stain it all and leave it because I think it turned out really good. I've got some screws that I'm going to need to uh, secure this with, but um, it's going to learn out good. The thing that I'm going to do real quick on this top, this has a really sharp edge and I don't want that rubbing. So I'm going to go run around with the sander real quick and just bevel that edge off. Now that it's all stained, it's time to get it all assembled. Let's go get my stuff. So what I have, I'm gonna put the top on in this bottom piece. So I'm gonna do the top first, and then I'm gonna add the bottom piece. They're little brackets like this. They hold the hope the top down. So I'm gonna put those on now. But first, I gotta make sure my overhangs are the same all the way around. Well, let me rephrase that. On the back, I'm almost gonna do it flush and have a little more overhang on the front. But I just gotta make sure everything's the same. Watch my arm get ripped off. I usually don't do so big 
So now I think I'm gonna recover the cushions because I've got the fabric that I have an ottoman in here and I'm gonna put over that up. I think that's gonna look good. Since these flip up, they'll be really easy. I'm just gonna unscrew the hinges, cover it, and then screw it right back on. corner the best way that I know how is I fold this in I fold that in and then you pull this over and then staple it It's got plenty of room for two chairs. You could do three. I'm gonna store the other two fold-up chairs up in the closet. I put a basket right here because if you own a 337, you know there's no place for shoes when you walk in. So that's gonna be like my little place for shoes. And then I've got these two chairs. I'm gonna make or do something, a little table here. It's not gonna be what I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was gonna have a little more room when I got it in here, but I don't. So I'm gonna build them a little table there and uh, that'll be it. I think it turned out great. And then it's got the little shelf for my computer to sit. I just slide it in there. Also, I know people are probably got some questions about how to, will I open my window? You can get to it from underneath here. You can just reach in there and open it and close it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions on any other videos that you would like to see, just let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe our channel. We'll have more adventures. I just wanted to give you a little how-to video. Uh, did a few more extra things. I added um, these curtains. The other curtains, I think, I had changed out the fabric, but I had left the little rods at the bottom. But I just wanted I, I just wanted curtains to be usable, and those were not. I ordered, and I'll put a link below, it's a linen tarp, like you would a painter's tarp. Once you wash them and dry them, they make the prettiest linen. I've done them in my house. I've made a bed skirt out of them. They just turn out beautiful. If you live in a camper, because those curtains were not movable, then they were useless. The only time, like, if I didn't want people looking in, you have to pull down the shade. Well, then it makes it dark. And I'm not a dark person. So, nail the curtains the way that I've done them. I can pull them together. I still get light, but yet it blocks people from looking in. I'm excited. This is going to work really well, and I've done all the curtains in here. To show you what I've done, I just took 
because I you can't rehem these. This is really hard, and this is like a great hem. I took 24 inch wide tarps and I just cut how long I needed them and then I just sewed a pocket at the top and I put a tension rod up here and I pulled it all the way to the front so it doesn't affect the, the blind. It works fine and it looks good. The only other thing that I did do that I realized the other curtains did is the other curtains kind of, if you know, they have the Velcro and it goes back so that when this is down, you can't see through the side. I took and stapled on all of them the fabric back right here so that way it covers it back to the wall. I love it. 